So now that you already know how to work with verbs in the present indicative tense and also how to talk about yourself, I thought it would be nice to teach you how to talk about your family, which in Spanish is la familia. So first of all, we're going to look at some vocabulary words involving your family members, and then we'll look at actual sentences that will help you talk about your family members. So let's start with this picture right here. Uh, we'll start with the core family members. So the figure on the left hand side is the mother, which in Spanish is la madre. La madre. But you can also call her la mamá, which is kind of a nicer way to call your mother. This is like mother and this is like mom in English. Uh, and there's a similar thing for a father. Uh, in Spanish it's el padre. El padre. But a nicer way to call your father would be dad, which in Spanish is el papá. Okay, so la mamá, el papá. And now we have uh, the siblings. So this is the sister, which is la hermana. La hermana. And uh, brother would be el hermano. El hermano. If you wanted to say siblings together, so brothers and sisters together, the word for that is los hermanos. Los hermanos which I understand might be a bit confusing because los hermanos is actually the plural of brother. So, but in Spanish, basically the word for siblings is the same as the word for brothers. So you can have a sentence like this. Tengo tres hermanos, dos hermanas y un hermano, which means I have three siblings, two sisters and one brother. So you'll usually find out from the context whether this means siblings or whether it means brothers. And a very similar logic applies to the word parents. So if I want to say mom and dad together, I say los padres. Los padres, which is which has the same form as saying el padre in plural. So los padres, parents, los hermanos, siblings. And let's go ahead and take a look at some other vocab. So we've already covered these three and these three. And uh, you can also have grandparents. So grandpa would be el abuelo. Grandma would be la abuela. Note that uh, most of these words, I always put that in, in bold, um, go or follow the rule that I've explained in some of the previous videos that when something is male of male gender, it tends to end with an O. So if something is el, it is usually it usually ends with an O. And the, the very same way is for females. So la usually ends with an A. And it applies in most of these words, as you can see. So, grandpa, el abuelo, grandma, la abuela, and again, together, grandma plus grandpa, uh, or grandparents, los abuelos. So again, you just take the male word and you put it into plural and you get grandparents. The same logic as we have with siblings and with parents. Um, now some other words, like son, son, daughter, and children or kids. Son is el hijo, daughter, la hija. And children and kids, again, the very same logic, los hijos. So you take this, put it into plural, and you have them like the conjunction of, of all, all the kids that you can have. And um, you can also have a husband or a boyfriend. Husband in Spanish is el marido or el esposo. It means the same, it's no difference uh, in these two words as far as I know. And if you have a boyfriend, it's el novio. If you have a wife, we would say la mujer or la esposa. We don't say la marida, that just doesn't really exist in Spanish. La mujer is also a word for woman, a woman in general, but it also can mean wife in certain contexts, or la esposa, that's, that's the safe, safe bet, safe word. And girlfriend is la novia. So I'll just run through these once more very quickly, and then we'll get to the actual sentences. Mother, mom, la madre, la mamá. Father, dead. El padre, el papá. Parents, los padres. Brother, el hermano. Sister, la hermana. Siblings, los hermanos. Grandpa, el abuelo. Grandma, la abuela. Grandparents, los abuelos. Son, el hijo. Daughter, la hija. Children, kids, together, los hijos. Husband, el marido or el esposo. Boyfriend, el novio. Wife, la mujer o la esposa. Girlfriend, la novia. 
Okay, so now we've got the vocabulary covered and we can take a look at um, actual sentences. So these are pretty much the same sentences that we've covered about yourself in some of the previous videos. This one will be about the age of a person, this one will be about the name, and this one will be about the things that he or she likes. So you can notice that um, all of these verbs are in the third person. That is because we're going to be talking about he or she, so someone from your family, some third person. So that's why we have the third form of the verbs in here. Um, so let's go ahead and fill them in. For example, mi abuelo tiene 70 años. Okay? My grandfather, a grandfather is 70 years old or has 70 years. You should already be able to fill these in since you since we just covered the vocab and you should already know numbers, so this should be an easy one. Um, notice the word tiene, which we've covered previously, is from the verb tener, which means to have, and it is a partially irregular verb. Uh, the second one, for example, mi madre se llama Mijaela. My mother's name is Michaela, or my mother is called Michaela. Again, you can fill this with any family member and, of course, any name. Notice that this word is a reflexive word, or a reflexive verb. So we have the uh, reflexive part of the verb in the first form, which is se, mete se, nos os se. And llama is from llamar or llamarse, llamarse, the first form. So. Me llamo, te llamas, él se llama. That's what we have here. And the last one has the verb gustar in it, which I've explained previously is a tricky verb uh, because it does not follow the regular rules. It kind of works like a reflexive verb, but the, the reflexive parts are different. You can see that here, this is the regular reflexive part. It says se, and this one says le. So this is the one that we'll be having with uh, gustar in the third person. And this is also an essential part of the sentence. You have to have it there. It's kind of an introductory. Uh, so it comes with the gustar. I, I can fill this in for you. For example, a mi hermano le gusta jugar al golf. My brother likes to play golf. Or um, a mi uh, hija le gusta pintar. My daughter likes to paint. Uh, the same rules would apply to gusta and gustan, as we've covered in the video about yourself. So whenever you have something coming after the verb gustar that is in plural, you have to say gustan. And if, if you want to use a, a verb or something in the singular form after the verb gustar, you just say gusta. So, for example, um, a mi hermano le gustan los perros. So, um, my brother likes dogs. Dogs was in the plural form, so I said gustan. Or I can say, um, a mi novio le gusta mm, mi gato, which means my boyfriend likes my cat. The cat was in singular, that is why I said gusta. Okay, so that was it. I'll just scroll back to the vocab for you so you can run through it very quickly with your eyes. And uh, yeah, you should now be able to talk about your family members, so you can go ahead and, uh, and uh, brag about your new skills to them. And I'll see you at the next video.